Hello, world. This is the Sydney Silver Show. And yes, this is the Naked Lady Show. I am the naked woman right now. And just to prove it, we're going to go to the uh, the large view of the room. See? Woo! Naked! Yes, I am nude. <laughs> okay, I promised this show for you. Here I am. All right, can we go back to this uh, camera right here? Thank you. Okay, so as promised, this is the West Virginia UFO Show number two. And I am doing it nude. So this is, I'm very, very nervous right now. Okay. Do we have our caller on the line yet? No? Okay. Hang on. Let me just try to get her on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right while we're waiting for the caller, I want to go to our good news. I do have some good news for today. I promised everybody the good news about war. I know that's a topic that everybody thinks like there can never be any good news in it. I actually did find something this week that I couldn't find any good news in. So I'm still struggling with it. Okay, we have the caller on air. Let's just say hi to the caller really fast. Hello, caller. Yes, this is Kelly. How are you? Hi, Kelly Kinsler, right? Yes. Awesome. This is Sydney Silver. You're on the Sydney Silver Show. So I'm just talking about the good news right now. You can go ahead and listen in and, and chime in if you like. Have you have you ever thought that there might be good news in war, Kelly? By the way, I'm uh, butt, I'm butt naked, just so you know. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> It's, I'm very nervous. <laughs> I'm more nervous than you are, so don't worry about it. Have, have you uh, have you thought of anything? Uh, well, I guess there's some good and some bad in it. I okay. think it's, it's more more bad than good. I think. Well, I'm not a fan of war, like being violent and that kind of thing, and people dying no, and, and getting either. killed and that sort of thing. So I had a hard time with this, but I I came up with something, and I'm going to just read it off because. It was kind of complicated, so I need to read it. So, all right. Here's what I came up with: is that disagreement isn't always bad. We're all thinking that we have to agree with each other and be the same as each other. But if we were marching in lockstep, we would have nothing new and no progress. If you disagree with someone, in other words, you want to war with them, you can either choose to fight or you can choose to understand their side, even if you disagree and remain their friend. Or you can choose to stay away from them and not be their friend, right? Right. But there's something else you can do. You can come up with a solution to the conflict that brings something new and beneficial to the world. And therein lies the good news about conflict, otherwise known as war, which is that disagreement creates an opportunity to discover and create new ways of life, solutions, and other things. So once we figure out that conflict, war gives us an opportunity to come up with solutions to problems, I think we will welcome fights and disagreements as a creation force. And war won't be violent at that time. It'll be seen as an opportunity to create something greater for everyone. And the only reason I think war is violent and all about fighting right now is because everyone, both sides, are not grown up. We're just like a bunch of children trying to win and be right and have our side be right instead of thinking about the other side and coming up with solutions. So, yeah, I think a lot of it's got to do with money too. There is that too, but then that all comes down to being a child in your head. So, oh, yeah. that's my rant about war. Um, I'm also wearing a really awesome little bindi thing from our one of our last guests, Deborah. She is a business owner, she owns Valley Girls, and the girls gave me this awesome set and I'm wearing the, the head of it. So that's really awesome. Okay, Kelly, oh. let's get to you really fast. You have claimed you have a UFO photo. Can we show the um, UFO photo that Kelly sent me of all the destruction? It's like a oh, bunch yeah. of, it looks Wait. like we have this up. It looks like a bunch of metal or something. That's, yes. What um, is that? There was this really tall tower up towards the mountains near a Beckley or Bluefield area. And um, it was a it was a sturdy tower. I mean, it it'd been there a long time, and it was started out like a radio tower. Then it was a communications tower. And you know, if uh, certain structures when they fall, they're going to either fall to the left or the right, or you know, the front or the back. It's going to go in a, in a direction that the hillside is leaning to, and it's going to fall in that direction. But this one didn't. It looked like somebody had just came down and just completely stepped on it and just flattened it, completely flat. I mean. The picture I'm looking at, it it looks very unnatural. It doesn't look like something fell. Oh, no, it's, there's 
nothing natural about that at all. And and uh, later that day or that night that it happened, uh, people in that area had seen lights and had seen uh, things in the sky, and uh, they fully intended for that. You know that a UFO had actually done that for some for some reason. There was a um, like a dish on the top of it, and it was just it was just like it had been stomped. Okay, wait. And there was no sound. Nobody heard anything. Nothing. In my last, in our last show, which was West Virginia UFOs Part One, we learned that a lot of people up in West Virginia are seeing these UFOs. So, and now you're telling me like a bunch of people saw a UFO on top of this tower, right? Oh yeah, there was a light down on it, and then it was then it was just like gone, and then they went to check on it during the daylight, and um, there wasn't anything left of it. So do, there wasn't a sound. Nobody heard anything. Do, and, you know, something that big that's, you know, a couple hundred feet tall, somebody's going to hear it crash. Do people in general in West Virginia, do you all believe in UFOs down there? Oh, not everybody. Not everybody? I guess it, it, it's the ones, it's like like seeing Bigfoot. you got to see it to believe it. But it's a, it of seems like it's a lot of people. It, you know? A lot of people There's have seen it. a lot it. of um, chemical plants around here. They call it Chemical Valley, and they seem to uh, congregate around those areas where there's a lot of industry for some reason. The UFOs do. What do you think they're doing yeah. in the chemical areas? Well, um, not too long ago, there was a chemical spill up towards Charleston area, and it got into the river. And uh, there were things cited then, too. I think they're just interested in what we're doing and. uh if, if they see us probably doing something wrong that might damage the earth, that they just that they might control it and stop it. I, I'm really not sure what their idea is on that. Yeah, I had I've heard that the UFOs hover over nuclear missiles, and they mm -hmm. will sometimes. You know, there was one on TV not too long ago that some uh, they were shooting one off, and one was seen around shooting lasers into the head of it to make it fall off so it wouldn't go into the atmosphere, and they they deadened it right away since it was launched. Okay. I always thought that UFOs were doing that because, you know, they like us and they don't want us to kill each other. And then I had this really ominous thought, which was what if UFOs are, you know, stopping us from using nukes and stopping us from using, you know, harming ourselves with chemicals and things like that. Right. Only they because they might have done that to their own planet and they're trying to save this one. This might be the only one that, like it in this game. That that is so exactly that is exactly what I was thinking. I was like, what if they're just, they just want to colonize here and they're just trying to save the planet for the point when they can just come here and, and take the planet. And it's not yeah. about us at all. Like, they don't care if we fry or not. Yeah, because I think they use a lot of uh, gold products in their, because uh, that works in space, you know, for the sun rays and things. And uh, we got a lot of gold here and a lot of water. So that might be something that they use to uh, power their ships with or something. I'm really not sure on that, but uh, that's kind of my idea about I, that. I had a dream once. It was a really weird dream that seemed really real. And it was like these UFOs were coming to the top of um, buildings. And they were landing on the building to suck the energy. The government had, it was a conspiracy. I had a lot of conspiracy dreams, you know. And the government mm -hmm. was giving them all of our energy and all of our power to power up their spaceships. And they were landing on these buildings sucking up all the energy and like racing off and nobody knew that the whole planet was working it, the technology right off the computers out of there and putting it in theirs too so do you feel these aliens are friendly or do you feel like they are out to get our planet um no i don't I, actually i think they've probably been here the whole time okay they just come and go they're just they're kind of watching and seeing how it goes but i think if we get too big for our britches they might take us out so maybe they feel this is their planet or they're sharing it with us secretly. Maybe they... I think it is secretly. I think the government's been hiding it for years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Because we didn't know anything about fiber optics until after that crash out there at uh, um, Area... You know, it was not Area 51, but it's um, the other one. I can't think of Roswell. I did notice we and have then, a lot of new like, technology. Years right? that fiber optics came out, so I'm pretty sure they're, they're copying... We're copying their technology. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Um, can we just prove to the audience that I am still butt naked here? Okay, see? I have nothing on, promise you. All right. Sorry, Kelly, you're going to have to see that later since I know you're on the phone. 
Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see that on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that one goes up on YouTube later. All right, thank you. All right, so um, let's pull up the other UFO photo that Kelly has. Kelly has another really amazing UFO photo. And, okay. Now, this looks like a triangle. And it's got three circles on top and a bunch of squiggles underneath it. What the heck are we looking at? That was a mark that was on a man's car here that lived just a few miles from here. And um, my dad uh, repaired typewriters, and he was bringing his typewriter over to get repaired. And he, we got on the subject about UFOs and stuff, and he said, I want you to come out here and look at my car. He says, I was sitting out in the middle of the woods near the end of the airport, and he said he kind of like had lapse of memory. Okay. You know, time disappeared from him there for a few minutes. And, uh, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> when uh, he came to, this was like an impression that was made into the top of his car, almost like the hood had been liquefied and that had been pressed into the top of his car. Okay. The paint wasn't chipped. There was no burn marks. Abs it wasn't pounded in. There was no way that he could have made that. There was no way. Now, you told me you had actually seen this with your own eyes. Yes. Did you all get any photographs of it, or did you just get the drawing of it? No, at, at that time, we, we, we didn't even really think about it. Right. You well, know. you know, the same thing happened to me. It was only recently that I started taking pictures of things that happened to me because I was like, oh, yeah. Back then in the 70s, you know, people didn't have camera phones. Okay, so this but was in, what year was this? Oh, it was probably, oh, I was probably about 16, 17 years old. So it's probably about 75, <gasps> 76. Right when I was born. Yeah. Nin um, 1975, that was when I was born. Please tell me it was in November. November. It was almost like made into the hood, you know. I mean, there was no paint chips or anything, though. It was, and he was, you could tell by the way he talked to you. His eyes got wide. You could see the white of his eyes. His lips got tight. You could tell that he, he actually believed this. I mean, he was, to himself, he was telling the truth. You could tell. He was absolutely terrified. So He was afraid they were going to come after him. Do you, Kelly, do you remember what month this happened? Was it November-ish? Or the oh, beginning of no, the year? it was probably uh, probably June or July. Darn, right before June I was born. Summer, I was out of school. <laughs> I was kind of hoping it was, you know, for me or something, but yeah. All right, so what do you <laughs> think What do you think this symbol means? Because it looks to me like a pyramid. It's got three floating balls. Well, from all the shows and stuff I've been researching on TV and in books and things, um, the three circles in a, in a triangle kind of represent Orion's belt. Oh, my gosh. Orion, the star system. Sirius, the dog yeah. star. And if you spell dog backwards, that's God, yeah. right? Right. That's why a lot of people think the aliens that may, some people think are our gods, come from the dog star because, which is called, is Sirius. Right. But is that okay. in Orion's I belt? Think, I think uh, even the, Sirius the, uh, is lower than that. Sirius Anunnaki, is like. Anunnaki, uh, they, you know, they, their, their name translates into those that came from the sky. So they have uh, dances and everything about it all the time. I mean, they, they really believe that their makers came from ships out of the sky. Well, I do know but that in the... In that day, you know, they didn't, they didn't know where a ship was, so it was either like a flying chariot or wheels in the sky. You know, a lot of that stuff's mentioned in the Bible, but people don't reference it to UFO, but that's what they called it at that time because they didn't have any other words for it. Kelly, I want to tell you what this picture looks like to me. Okay, because it's distinctly speaking to me right now. And it's because I have studied a little bit about ancient Egypt and Tesla, who created free energy and that sort of thing. Oh, yeah, I love Tesla. I love Tesla, too. I'm not sure if I like Tesla more or Jesus, but I think I like Jesus a little bit better. But Tesla's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. together and you got an electrifying man put them all together <laughs> <a new> miracle. <laughs> all right so yeah that's right okay so what this looks like to me it looks like a pyramid free energy machine because if you look at if you read some of those or watch some of the ancient ancient egyptian uh documentaries about how they possibly created energy out of the top of the pyramids the, mm -hmm. the pyramid faces up in the sky. Chemicals down each of those slides, and then it combined in that queen's. They call it the queen's chamber, and they think that it actually created energy. Yep. Yeah, and they 
face the pyramids up towards the stars, usually towards, I think, Orion's belt or Sirius. Yeah, um, that one point's right too, right too serious. It and, really does. and then right underneath the pyramid is limestone filled with water. And mm-hmm. that, that picture has, underneath the pyramid, it has what looks like water or some kind of something under it. So I'm wondering if this is some kind of a free energy symbol or something to do with those pyramids that they used, they, even well, if they, they didn't the use Nile, it. I think they had the Nile cut out closer to them at that time for their ships and things so that might have something to do with the water with the energy running through there yeah they did have that's through water very easily well if the and they pyramids did have batteries back then too they really did yeah i've seen the pictures of the batteries um the if the if this is a picture of a free energy device or a picture of a landing dock of an ancient pyramid you know for a ufo i don't know but I, it does look connected to that in some way and yeah. back back in 1975, did you all even know about this kind of stuff? Because now it's floating around everywhere no, on the internet. There wasn't anything about that on the news or anything about that back then. The only thing you got information from was National Geographic magazine back then. Wow, that's, you know, that's they, they didn't have anything like really that out there back. Then. Impressive. Can you talk I to wish, him? I wish I would have gotten a picture of that, uh, but. You know, at the time, we just didn't, we didn't even think about it. We, Dad kind of thought he was nuts, but I believed him because I could see the fear in his face. Yeah. Is he still alive then? Probably. I don't know. All right. <laughs> can you can you go to him and tell him what I was thinking about the, the free energy machine? I'd really appreciate it because I wonder, you know, this guy had something implanted on the hood of his car that we can't figure out. Looks yeah, I like I would have preserved the hood. Definitely. If I was sold a car or anything, I still would have preserved that good. Yeah. So really fast, we just want to show your art, Kelly. Um, oh, sure. Can we show her art just in a little suge- succession? We are just going to show some of your art up here on the screen. We have a dog photo up here. And Kelly does um, art for people. Do you want to go ahead and tell them where they can find you to create uh, art? Yes, I do pet portraits. And uh, I could be uh, reached on Facebook at any time. It's a Stargazer of the Third Star. Okay, and I'll link your information to you on the website. So if you like any of these portraits, you can go ahead and commission Kelly. And I know that you, Kelly, actually started a fan club for me, which is so awesome. So yes, thank it you. is the Sydney Silver Show Fan Club, and we just started it, and we need some members. So if you all love <laughs> Sydney, please come and be a member. <laughs> well, thank you so much. That really made me very, very blushy and excited and happy the other day. So... Um, it's called the Sydney Silver Show Fan Club online, I think, on Facebook. Is that the... Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you can go ahead and join that, and I'll post sometimes in there and, and such and whatnot. So that's going to be the official fan club from now on. So I'm really excited All about right. that. Yeah, thank you. And um, can we go ahead and show Kelly's picture so we know who we're talking to? All right. We've got a picture of you on the left, and who is this on the right? Yes. That, I want to give a shout out to him. He's a wonderful guy, an artist and dancer, and that's my best friend Baja, aka the Barracuda, <laughs> as his nickname. And I love him to death. And I want to give a quick birthday wish out to my daughter. She, today is her birthday. Okay, awesome. What's your daughter's name? Her name is Mathena. Mathena. Okay. Now back to the uh, the topic of the UFOs. By the way, hello Baja. I love Baja too. He's one of my first fans I ever met. My first actually self described fan. I love Baja. He's wonderful. So yes, hello he's to a good guy. Tunisia because he's a, a Muslim guy from Tunisia. So hello, if I'm saying that right, Tunisia. I hope I'm saying it right. Oh yes, it's Tunisia. Tunisia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an ignorant American. I don't really know. Um, okay, so. Do you have any personal UFO stories, or are your stories more about related into the ghost world? Uh, well, either one. Um, during a football game, I think it was about 1972 or 73, uh, one had hovered over the football We played it against a school called Vince, and it was like a really big deal. There would be three or 4,000 people there, and there would be fireworks and everything. It was like an NFL game, really, but it was a high school game. And uh, one came over the football field, and it was kind of a, um, cigar shape and it didn't have uh, really like an airplane like like the strobe lights and stuff like airplanes and blimps have it was more like a blue white color with kind of yellow mixed in with it it was a wild looking color 
and it came down probably about 100 feet over the field, and then within a blink of an eye, it was just gone. And everybody and saw this? no way that it could have been a blimp. There's no way. My uncle worked at the blimp factory in Akron, Ohio, and I knew how dirigibles are being built, and there's no way that that could have went that fast. No way. And everybody saw this in the stadium? Yes. Like three or 4,000 people that saw it. Wow. I, I never even heard of this one. When? What year was this? About 1972, 73. Wow. Oh, my gosh. No order. So... A lot of that these happened in uh, Canova, West Virginia, right on the Ohio River. Oh wow! Okay, so a lot of these things are that happened that we don't know about because we didn't have the internet back then. Right. And thousands of people w- would have seen it. Wow! Did you ever experience any other? And what happened after that? Like, did anybody get sick, or was it just deciding? No, they. The lot of them were just concentrating on the game. They didn't even look up. But the ones that did look up, I mean, they were like everybody was pointing. So, you know, I was looking, too, what were they looking at? And then there's this thing just hovering over the field, a couple hundred feet, maybe, 100, 200 feet. I, you know, after dark, you really can't judge, judge distance. But it seemed to be almost the same size as a football field. Wow. So, it was enormous. I mean, it's starting to but appear to me. no windows or anything. You know, you could just see lights around the bottom of it. And you could, you know, the shadow from the clouds, you could tell it was like a cigar shape. So was it like... um was it was it like shiny and hard looking, or was it kind of like just soft no, like a it balloon? Was, didn't it have like any metallic to it at all? It was almost like a dull black. Wow, how interesting is so that? I got a feeling that it could be something like a mirror effect. What do you mean a mirror effect? Like if it's in the clouds, it's going to look like a cloud. Right, right. That's what the the shine is, so if or it's something. In the dark, it's going to look dark. You know, so I think it's kind of imitating its surroundings. This one you feel was a chameleon. Okay. Interesting. I had never actually heard of chameleon UFOs before, but that's an interesting... Yeah, I theory. think that's how they how they kind of hide from everybody. And uh, is this the only UFO you've ever seen, or have you seen a bunch in, over oh, there in West no. Virginia? Oh, no. Me and my son were out back when it wasn't too long ago. I think it was just last year. Um, we were out back in the backyard, and there was supposed to be a meteor shower. But we was in the wrong section of the United States to see it. So we sat up there for three or four hours, you know, didn't really see anything. And then there was just this one, because we live right near an airport. But if a jet is flying and it looks like a straight line, it usually takes a long time for it to go from, like, one county to another. You know, you could see it. It would take probably half hour, you know, for it to move across the top of the sky like that. And it went from one ridge to the other, and they these are really spaced far apart, several miles apart. But airspace, you know, I can't really judge miles in airspace, but um, it went past in probably less than three minutes. Wow. And you could see the light, and it was a steady light. It wasn't a blinking light either. Yeah. And my son noticed it, and he said, Mom, I want you to look at that and watch it. And it was going at a really good clip. And it wasn't, I called the airport, there was no satellites in the area or nothing. Huh. All right. So, and what yeah. color was this one? Was it, out of here. was it like a white, can you describe? Yeah, it, was, it almost looked like a star. It matched the sky, but it was a little bit brighter. Okay, I had an experience once on Laurel Canyon where I was in a room. I actually saw a couple things up on Laurel Canyon Boulevard here in Los Angeles. But this one, it was kind of the same. It looked like a little star, and I was not facing it. I was looking, it was in the peripheral edge of my vision and I saw this thing hanging there, right? And I was like, what the hell is hanging there? So I looked at it and it went, Doom! and it just took off like so freaking fast. I could barely see it just yeah. took off. And later yeah. I was thinking about it and I was like, you know, that thing definitely was just hanging there because it w- at the speed it was going, it would have already been gone by the time I thought about it and turned to look at it. So it was definitely hanging there and then just took off, yeah. like, so fast. Well, they say that there's a, there's a base right off, I think, at Santa Cruz. There's a military base, and they say that there's there's a base right out there underneath the water. They watch them come and go out there all the time. There's lights in the water all the time out there. Well, what really freaks me out is why the heck was it watching me? Because it was sensitive to me, because when I looked at it, it took off. Unless it was a coincidence that at the minute I looked at it, it they took off. It could have been. Just you know, kind of scoping you out a little bit and say, uh oh, she saw us. Let's get out of here. Looking at me through and the bedroom window again. Thanks, aliens. 
I'm, I'm, I'm right here naked if you want. Over your window. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here naked for you right now. So, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry, your accent is giving me one too. I'm very sympathetic with accents. Okay, so um, are those your best uh, UFO stories? You think? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, awesome. That's- experiences ones that I've had so far. Well, yeah. I'm, st- I'm telling you what, I'm starting to really believe in West Virginia as a UFO hotspot. And I think a lot of UFO hunters need to go out there. Remember, your cell phones are not going to really work well out there. Oh, and yeah. And what's your area, uh, Kelly, so that people can know where to hunt? I'm in Cabell County. Where? Cabell County, right on the Ohio River. Okay. All right. And honey. Sounds yeah. good. And real fast, we only have two minutes, and I kind of wanted to say something else on the show, too. So I just wanted to let everyone know that I'm working on living like a thousand years. So um, I've been like researching anti-aging and all this kind of stuff because I'm almost, well, I'm pretty much 40 years old. I'm like 39. That's why I am forcing your butts to look at me naked, okay? Because you have to do it. (laughs) All right, so. Well, I turned 56 in just a couple of days on the 29th, (laughs) and I don't think I'll look it. Woohoo! All right, good for you. I'm doing really good with the skin. <laughs> so real fast, I know up to now I've never done anything for myself other than just being vegan. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I only have a minute left, so let me tell you really fast. I'm researching something called astrologous extract. has been known for a long time, um, I think since the 70s, but I'm taking it now every day so we can basically watch my progress as I take it. I don't know, because I think you got to take it for like a long time. And I'm also taking something called Astac. Xanthin, astaxanthin, it helps you supposedly if you eat it, and this is a little bit of health help here. We didn't play the intro, but it's okay. You eat it and you also put it on your skin. It's supposed to get rid of wrinkles. So I'm going to be reporting back to you on this one. It also helps um, raise your andepinectin, which is the hormone that eats the fat in your body. So if this jiggle goes away, I'm also trying a a fat uh, freezing machine. So I'll let you know about that. If this freaking jiggle goes away, I'll let you know. From, oh, yeah. You know? I'll take a 55-gallon drum of it. <laughs> I'll take a bath in it. And I'll I'm also it. taking... I'll take a bath. Uh, I'll work on it. Very important. Very important. Everybody, take your freaking multivitamins and minerals. I don't care who says what to you. Yes. Stay away from tap water. There's so many chemicals in it. Stay with bottled yep. water. Yep. I'm taking a powdered, a powdered version, okay, because it absorbs better in veggie caps. And they say that 40% of our vitamins and minerals are now depleted out of our soil and not in our food anymore. It doesn't matter if it's vegetarian or meat. So eat your vitamins and minerals. I've been taking magnesium and got rid of my migraines, believe it or not. Yeah, so, I heard about astrologus, astaxanthin, stay tuned for more because I'm going to be taking it over the years. And you're going to be able to see my face as it progresses and we'll see if it works or not. So, um, sorry, yeah. our show's over. Can we show I'll one more shot just to show that I am freaking nude? Yay. All right, Yay. everybody. All right, thank you so much, Kelly, for calling. I will be in touch with you. This is Sydney Silver Show. Go to sydneysilvershow.com and comment on our forum and make fun of me for being naked. All right, bye-bye, everyone. Okay, bye-bye, dear. Bye, Kelly. Okay, bye. Bye.